Hello everyone and welcome to another DP vlog. This one is going to be short, so if you've got something cooking or heading out for an errand, you probably won't need to hit the pause button. I've been watching and enjoying content from Brian Green lately, and some of the discussion got me thinking about the warp effects that are now part of our sci-fi DNA. I'm sure most of you know the constant C, which is the speed limit in special relativity for anything with mass. There is an immediate disconnect here because we have to first allow for the fictional technology where V, the velocity of some object, like a starship, is equal to or even greater than C quite frequently. In modern sci-fi, this situation is of course routine. The good news is that this shouldn't matter because my question is how such an effect might appear to the observer at rest. So for the camera and the audience, 21st century physics is still alive and well. My narrative for this vlog is that the warp aesthetics we grew up with seem to be opposite to a style informed by science. I'll be outlining three specifics and assigning some blame. Then we'll wrap with an alternate warp out, one that presumably is informed by science. I have to believe at least 90% of sci-fi creators, amateur and professional, fully understand this. I mean, you don't have to be especially educated in science today to have learned it accidentally. We know our space exterior shots are wrong whenever we add sound effects, and yet we continue the habit. On this point, I lay most of the blame on Star Wars. Nearly a decade before that movie was unleashed upon the world, 2001 A Space Odyssey gave us a solid hour of music-only space exterior shots, and in grand fashion. You have to wonder if Stanley Kubrick's more scientific approach might have gained more traction in the 80s had George Lucas not laid down the New Order in 1977. If you only knew the power. To be sure, the first Star Wars film was an overt, irreversible paradigm shift. You can see that in nearly every sci-fi production that followed, TV and film. Engage. In the other galaxy, Star Trek is largely responsible for imprinting upon us that it looks really cool when a starship stretches longer as it warps away. But did you know that the length of an object is supposed to decrease as V approaches C? Redshift does not mean looks red. When a vessel zips away from our point of view, the visible wavelengths from that vessel are stretched. You might remember from Psychology 101 that it is the long, visible wavelengths which are associated with the color red. And so red shift means shifted in the direction of those longer wavelengths. You know, this particular Doppler phenomenon could have been called long shift, and then non-scientists wouldn't get tripped up so. Now, normally objects are not receding from us fast enough to take on a new red hue, but once our favorite starship approaches C, I think we enter our third example of oversight. Both Star Wars and Star Trek established a preference for blue during warp effects. But shouldn't the ships really get distorted to red? If we want to get super pedantic, remember that the visible spectrum is quite narrow, so our starship wouldn't be visible at all once those wavelengths get really stretched. Forget about looking red. However, let's temper all of this overthinking madness with the understanding that we are restricting our exploration really to the onset of the warp out. That is, the moments leading up to light speed, our last glimpse of the vessel. How would that moment appear if, say, a person like Kubrick were the visual effects supervisor? Well, based on everything we've just covered, I think the effect has to be quiet, no sound in space, compressed, the ship should be getting shorter, not longer, and red. So we should see a distortion towards the red colors 
just before the ship becomes invisible. All of this is the opposite of what we're used to, and I've prepared just such an effect. Helm ready, Captain. All right, Mr. Sulu. Let's see what she's got. Yep, I know what you're thinking, and I don't like it either. Until next time. This is Antimatter.